Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of NASCAR Radio. <laughs> I think I took about four seconds there to get in without messing up, but all right, let's do it. Uh, this is NASCAR Radio, episode 160. I'm your pal Val. With me is the man, the myth, the legend, PSA, and White Castle Hall of Famer, Logan. How are you today, tonight? I'm feeling like I'm on the bubble. Make sure, yeah, well, obviously it depends on what side, but... <laughs> but this is NASCAR Radio, uh, where trading cards and racing meet, and I want to thank our sponsor, Panini America. And I've got a great show for everybody today. We're going to do a racing recap. We're going to deep dive deep into the 1989 TG Masters of Racing. Uh, there's a little mm-hmm. history there, a lot of history there. And then, we'll, and then we'll finish up with King's Court. So um, let's do our shout-outs. Especially big shout-out to new subscriber Fly High 18 Welcome to the show. I wonder if he likes Kyle Bush. I wonder if he's going to change it to Fly High 8. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. But welcome. Yeah. And then shout out to Kyle Katz, Skid Mark, Skid Marks, Cards, and Jason Freeman for the YouTube comments. We read them. So please leave them. Yep. All right. Uh, anything else? It's got a lot going on tonight. So. Yeah, it's been a busy day for both of us. <laughs> yes, it has been. All right. So, all right, let me change. Okay, yep, that's what I need. All right, here we go. Race recap, the Craftsman Truck Series. Uh, that was race number 19, and that was the Kansas Lottery 200. That was Friday, September 8th. Christian X. Was our winner, Heights Fisher Rookie, was Tyler Gray at position two. That was an interesting restart there. Uh, yes, it, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was uh, a big one there. And our winner, Christian Eckes. Where am I going? Here we're here. We talked about his cards before. It's been a while, I think. Why am I not? Okay, bear with me here. Ha. Ah. So you'll find his rookie cards, first cards in 2020. Panini Chronicles in the Ascension. There's also autographs there. And Spectra. Also in 2020, Panini Prism. He has a base card there, card number 51. All the different parallels. There are Panini Prism signing sessions. And also, he's in 2020 Panini National Treasures. That's cards there and signatures. Yeah, and he's not wearing any masks. He is not. He's got a decent auto. Yeah, it's a little squiggly, but it's not too bad. Not too bad. And then our highest finishing rookie... Tyler Gray. You'll find his cards in 2021. Dunruss has a Raider Rookie card there with the different parallels and printing plates. Also in 2021, Panini Chronicles, Absolute, Crusade, uh, autographs in Absolute, autographs, and also autographs in Crusade. Obsidian, he's in Score, has Score autographs, and in Spectra, 2021 Panini National Treasures card there and Ricky signatures also in 2020 2021 Panini Prism has a uh, base card there with Prism signatures and Prism signing sessions yeah you know I like this kid a lot but his card really didn't belong in National Treasures honestly (laughs) he he looks so young in that Dunros card man he does he looks like he's like 16, 17. Yeah, he's that uh, old. He's riding his bike to the to the ice cream shop. Get, get some ice cream. <laughs> yep. All right. Next uh, race. 
Uh, it's going to be race 20. It's going to be UNOH 200 at Bristol Motor Speedway. And that's going to be Thursday night, September 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern. So we're recording Wednesday. So we'll, this will drop Thursday night or Friday. So uh, this race will either be going on or uh, almost or have been over. So, yeah, uh, by the way, I think Carson Hosevar won. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> well, looking at the driver points, Corey Himes in the uh, lead, but not by much. It's pretty tight there for the first, uh, actually, for all, like, seven positions, six positions. So uh, they run, and then I think there's a cutoff at four, right? Right at right before Phoenix. So yep. it's going to be really tight for getting in that final four for the truck. So. And then moving over to the Xfinity series. Did I pull that slide down? Yep. Okay. That was race number 26. And that was the Kansas Lottery 300. And that was Saturday, September 9th. Kansas Speedway. John Hunter Nemechek was our winner. Highest finisher record was Parker Reslev. And John Hunter Nemechek's got it going on. He does, man. I think he's going, he's, to, one. he's going to cut next year. Yeah, <laughs> he deserves it. We've talked about him before on the show in his rise. I don't say fall, but uh, descension, descent a little bit down the truck and then rising back up. So, mm -hmm. but you'll find his cards in 2016 Panini certified. He has a base card there with the mirror parallel certified potential signatures there. Also, in 2016 Panini Prism, Fire Suit Fabrics. Also, Fire Suit Fabric Team in Prism. That's right, folks. <laughs> Prism had relics back then, that yep. one year. And then 2016 Panini Prism Driver Signatures. No base card in Prism. Man, that would have been awesome to have a Prism base card. But God, no kidding. Yeah, but driver signatures uh, for him there. He does have another base card in 2016 Panini Torque. Base card there, printing plates, test proofs, and then also combo material signatures in Panini Torque. So those are kind of tough. They're, I think, number either 49 or 25. There's real short printed those. Yeah, and, and those are cool too. Yeah, I think I got one of those somewhere. I was I'm always always been a John Hart New Check fan, so I think yeah. I got one of one of the torque card somewhere. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I think I picked up, I don't know how many years ago. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So John Harden, you check. We'll see how he, uh, how he does, but I think it was his to lose. So. Yep. I think so. But, but he's, he's earned his right to go back to cup. So I'm proud for him. Yeah. R real happy for him. And then our highest finisher, Ricky Parker Resliff. He doesn't have any cards yet, but I have a feeling he's going to be in Chronicles. Yep, he's coming. Yes, he is. And then our next race, race number 27, that's going to be the Food City 300, and that's going to be Bristol Motor Speedway, Friday, September 15th at 7.30 p.m. Bristol, baby. Yes, sir. And then moving over to the Cup Series. That was race number 28, and that was the Hollywood Casino 400, and Sunday, September 10th at Kansas Speedway. Tyler Reddick won in the overtime. Highest fish rookie was Ty Gibbs. Yeah. Yeah, no Noah Gregson. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think Ty freaking Gibbs has got it wrapped up. I I would agree with that. Yeah. And Tyler Reddick, his cards, 2016 Panini Prism. He has driver signature. Prism's there. No base card. 2016 Panini Torque. Base card there. Card number 66. Different parallels. Test proof. Printing plates. Dual materials. Driver scripts. And then also 2016 Panini Certified. Base card there with the mirror parallels. And 2016 Panini Certified. Certified potential signatures and the parallels there. 
yeah, he made a fantastic move for the win, going going low and passing everybody. Um, you know, and, and Denny Hamlin, he was too busy worrying about uh, Kyle Larson, so he screwed up his restart. He was backing up because Kyle Larson was backing up, so he backed up too. So that was crazy. Yeah, I think he Tyler. I don't say he stole one, but he yeah. Uh... He was there. I mean, he, I don't know that he stole it, but because he was running up front, but still, D Denny Hamlin should have been the winner of that race. Yeah, I would agree with that. Just uh, Denny let one go, and uh, Tyler was, was there to pick it up. Well, that's two weeks in a row for Denny, you know, Darlington and then Kansas. He should have, he should have won both of those races. Should have, could have, would have. The players are tough. I mean, okay. as many cup wins as he has without a championship, I mean, it's a little bit of a little bit of luck being in the right place, right time, and not only you, but the person in front of you, what they do. Yep, exactly. Right. If you get behind somebody, maybe on uh, old tires or whatever on a restart, of course, that's a time they're going to spin the tires, and you no go. Yeah. What was it that Curly said from the Three Stooges? I'm a victim of circumstance. <laughs> I think that, that is uh, maybe Denny's, uh, yeah, Denny's exactly. theme song right there. Yep. Curly shuffle. Yep. And then, and then Ty Gibbs, uh, 2020 Panini Chronicles. He's everywhere. And 2020 Panini Prism signature series. And, uh, there you go. I was going to say something about the autographs, but I'm not going to say nothing. Yeah, we, we've, we've said it before. So, Yeah, move on. If you want to know how we feel about his autographs, go check out previous episodes. <laughs> like anyone. <laughs> yeah. But this one. Okay. <laughs> uh, next race, the Bass Pro Shops Night Race at Bristol Motor Speedway, Saturday, September 16th, 7.30 p.m. So we have a Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night races. And that yeah, Saturday think, night, that, that's going to be a long one. The lap, stage laps are going to be 125, 250, and 500. Oh, God. <laughs> and I tell you what, Martin Truex Jr., he's got to he's got to have a good race. And he traditionally, he is not good at Bristol. So uh, I'm glad you mentioned him. He, he was uh, talking about, like, bad circumstances. Man... You know, was he on the pole? And well, anything that could go wrong did go wrong. He, I yeah, he backed up out. immediately, and then of course Dale Jr. and Jeff Burton all in were, oh, he's backing up! Oh, and they're all screaming and everything, and something's wrong. Oh. <laughs> and sure enough, he had a a small puncture in his tire, and it cost him dearly. Yeah, he all the stage points he had. All used up. That's yeah. a tough one. But yeah, well, that was a tough one, man. He's got he's got to have he's got to hope for a little bit of bad luck from some of the guys right above him too, because if they have good races and he has good races, he's not getting in. Right. Well, Crazy. fingers crossed for him. Yeah, I thought he was a pretty good shot to win the championship. The way he had all those points, and but there you go. You never know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he was the regular season champ, and he had all those bonus points, and those were gone down the tube, man. He, he cashed them all in that that, <laughs> he did, that, man. that track. He didn't even get a, a Chick-fil-A sandwich or anything for cashing yeah. in those points. I don't know how many points he had. If it was 100, 200, like, all right, here's my points. You know, take what you need. Like, take them all. Yeah, jeez. Open his points wallet. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely spent them all. You're right. <laughs> he spent them all. Okay. Uh, so we're done with Cup over to Formula One. They were off, they are racing September 17th, 8 a.m., and that's at the Singapore Grand Prix. That's the Marina Bay Street Circuit. Yeah, I think that that race is traditionally the temperature is like really hot there. I think I think it's going to be a pretty steamy race for them. 
We'll see if Max can win another one here, break the record of 10. <laughs> yeah, he, the record that he has. <laughs> exactly. Well, can he extend it? Yeah. I would say all, I'm going to shake my magic eight ball. <laughs> all signs point to yes. <laughs> Does it get to the point where like there's so much pressure for them to win, for Red Bull to win? You know, they've run, they won all 14 races so far. Yeah. So who who do you think? I mean, Death Streak is going to get broken eventually by some other team. Who do you what team do you think is going to break that streak? I know I'm putting 10 wins in a row. Break break just break, yeah. Breaks breaks this streak. Oh, somebody that, that will break this. Um I mean it's going to get broken eventually. So, something's going to happen to Max, something's going to happen to to, uh, Sergio Perez, Sergio Perez, yes. Uh, I, I'd have to say it's got to be uh, Fernando Alonso or Hamilton. I think they're third and fourth in points. Uh, maybe Lando. I, but it's got to be something, something crazy. I don't know. Maybe it's one of the Ferrari guys. They had so much bad luck. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for the bad luck, they wouldn't have any luck at all. Right. So, so maybe they're cashing it in and they're the ones that are going to break it. You know, all the planets are going to align just for that one race. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we'll see. It'll be interesting to see who breaks it. I mean, I was just thinking like when Max had trouble, uh, it was a few years ago, right? He had a few DNFs because the Red Bull cars weren't, couldn't finish the race. Yeah, that was – was that the beginning of last year or a year before last? I can't remember. I think Some it was last year. Yeah, maybe it was. I think it was the beginning of last year because, yeah. But, maybe you know, for Ferrari, like I said, they're due. Yeah, they're past due for sure. They've had so much bad luck and uh, just wrong calls on pit road and everything else. I'm, <laughs> Tires not ready, you know, just crazy stuff. I, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but they had, there was a little video of the Ferrari pit stop using like Legos, and, and they <laughs> and the, the car comes in and the guys take off the wheels, and then they see the guys running into the into the back, getting the tires, <laughs> and then coming back and then putting on the tires, and then the car going. So yeah, I got I got to go find that. <laughs> that I, I almost downloaded that to to play, but I was like, okay, forget it. <laughs> anyway, um, so maybe Red Bull gets uh, Red Bull. Maybe Ferrari gets breaks that streak. So yeah, I'm going with Aston Martin. I think I think that Fernando Alonso maybe maybe our guy. Okay, uh, let's move over to the IndyCar series. Uh, that was race number 17, their last race. That was the 2023 Firestone Grand Prix of Monterey. And Scott Dixon was our winner. Our 2023 champion was Alex Polo. Rookie of the year was Marcus Armstrong. Yep. Former F1 driver. Yeah. And Scott Dixon, I know we talked about his cards. A few highlights. He has a 2003, that's that formula from the Czech magazines. That's a pretty cool one there. Yeah, those guys were ahead of their time, for sure. Over there, over there with that Czech magazine. I love, yeah, I love that. That's just, if I had access to some of those, I'd, I'd work on that set. Uh, was it Harmon's cards? He, he um, did a lot of chrome breaks, and I think he made pretty good money with that, and then he ended up getting one of those, like that whole complete formula set. There was one complete set for sale, I think, in Binder. I think we covered it on one of the shows yeah. uh, last year, maybe what it was. but And then this is the 2007 Rittenhouse. These are, they're, these are three cards uh, in that in that set, and but they as we found out the other week, they kind of go together to make kind of a little panorama photo. I think Stealth did this in, in um, for NASCAR, too. 
I think it's a cool concept. Maybe that's something that Panini sh Panini should work on. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Bring that back if uh, anybody, well, you know, if Misha is listening or watching, that would be cool. Well, you know, they're going to have something like that coming up in Prime, though, with that, those numbers. Yeah, you're right, but it's in Prime. <laughs> it's high, super high end. Yeah. But I was true. thinking, I don't know, not say Donruss, maybe in Chronicles, but anyway. Uh, so that's Scott Dixon, and what else does he have? He has some other cards, but nothing, just the uh, stuff from the car packages. Yeah, those are generic. They, they, they don't even have the picture of, of Scott Dixon on them. Yeah, but those are the, kind of the two earlier sets for those. So, And then, I don't know if you want me to call it Alex Pillow, but... Uh, our series champion, he has cards in 2003 in the Chip Canassi Racing series that was were put out, and we covered that set. Uh, that's a tough set and packs to find um, yeah. for that. I hope they do that. Chip Canassi does it again next year, or somebody else picks that up. But uh, here are some of the, the cards. The pack there is down to the left, and I think it's got eight cards in it. And then uh, the auto, there's also autos in there, and Outflow also has an auto in there. Uh, not individually numbered, but they're a print run of 100. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of sad the uh, IndyCar is done for the year, but... But you know, as, as Forrest Gump says, for us, one less thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> and they can all watch nascar now that's right everybody switched to nascar a lot more fun yep <laughs> all right uh i think that's what we got for race and recap yeah um i've got a couple of little news nuggets uh that happened this week talk about them just real quick um, from Jayski, Noah Gregson issued a statement on Twitter on this past Tuesday thanking NASCAR for reinstating him and expressing a commitment to get back to the cup level in the future. So, so he's all good to go now. So that was quick. So what do you think? Does he go back to Jared Motorsports? Back to Xfinity? Well, he's, he's supposed to be in an ARCA race this weekend. Oh, awesome. All right. So, yeah, he's yeah he's, he's entered in, in one of the ARCA races. So, or in one of the ARCA, the ARCA race this weekend. So, he's, he's he is going to be racing. You know, whether he gets back to Cup or not, I mean, I mean, next year I think it's pretty much out because everybody's already got their deals pretty much done. It, or, you know, if not, they're not done, they're almost done. So, because this is the time of year. I mean, usually it even starts even sooner than this where you're finalizing all your plans for the next season. So I don't think, I don't think we're going to see Noah Gregson next year. He may, he may come in there as a, as a splinter team from, for one of the other teams, you know, like he could be a, another car for um, uh, trying to think who he could be for. He, he could, he could be for a lot of teams, but uh I don't think we're going to see him as a full-time regular next year. He may, like you said, he may go back to Xfinity. I think you don't want to jump at anything at cup level. You want to have some good funding and good equipment and yes, not just be at cup level. Right. Cause that was John, number, John Hearn Nemechek. When he, when he went to cup level, he was one of the smaller teams, but mm -hmm. went back down to come back now as a, you know, one of the better, better teams. So, yeah. So, All right. Get what so else got? One more thing. Uh, I was listening to Sirius XM NASCAR radio today. And Dave Moody mentioned the fact that Zane Smith from the truck series is working on a cup deal for next year. Uh, no details have been announced, but they say an announcement could come later this week. So by the time this show drops, we may know what he's going to be doing next next year. So that's good for him. He's he's a hot shoe. 
uh, hot commodity. So that's good. I'm glad to see somebody is is working with him to get a cup deal going. And jump Xfinity and just go right to Coke. Yeah. Well, you know that's that that's kind of what uh, Kurt Busch did. He he went from trucks to Cup, and look where he landed. Yeah, he did all right. I think he did good. <laughs> yeah. Well, Zane won the truck championship, if I remember right, last year. Yep. Correct. And doing pretty good this year. So. Yeah, he's yeah he's had a good pretty good year. So I'm glad to see that for him. I'm happy for him. Definitely. That, that's all I got. It's just a couple little things. Um, you know, not nothing big. Just wanted to mention that. Okay. I guess we'll go to our next segment. The 1989 TG Masters of Racing. Yep. All right. Let me get some stuff here to share. Plus, we've got some show and tell, too, on top of the our graphics. We do. Uh, let's see. Which one is this here? Where am I going? All right. So, so some folks might recognize this, might not recognize this, but this is issue number five of the Racing Collect Collectibles Price Guide. So before Beckett with racing, the Racing Collectibles Price Guide actually was the first price guide, monthly price guide for racing. And I think it premiered in December of 89. Uh, so the reason I have this up here, and, uh, if you notice, it was produced by Sports Stars Incorporated down in Orlando. And Sports Star Incorporated was uh, Dane Turner. And we'll get we'll talk about that. But I was uh, scrolling through looking for some pricing for some early racing for them, and so. This Masters of Racing was produced in uh, was it four series, and each one was cellophane and kind of like as a factory set. And so they actually mm -hmm. sold, um, or somebody got a hold of some uncut sheets and was selling them. So, but maybe I'm jumping ahead here. Let me. Do I have the other one here? You probably need to talk about a little bit about the history of it. Sure. Uh, let me go to that slide here. There we go. So the Masters of Racing, this, this uh, article here is from May of 94. And it, it jumps into some of it. Um, they go through some of the history of like the 88 Max and the Winter Circle cards. And then basically where I'm getting to that. So in April of 1989, TG Racing was created by Dane Turner and Gene Granger. Um, and Gene had been a historian for Winter Circle cards. And we'll talk about those one, uh, one show as well. And was either exposed to expand his historical background and, you know, basically wanted to do that. But the, uh, there was a huge opportunity was presented to TG racing when it was, when it, when they learned that the racing pictorial magazine was for sale. And that was printed from 1959 through 1986. And you might've heard us or the 1972 uh, STP set, you know, those photographs appeared in the Racing Pictorial magazine, uh, as well as the 1985-86 Sports Star uh, photographic. So, um, and so the big thing here is that they purchased uh, the Racing Pictorial catalog which basically is close to 200,000 images dating back from 1959 1986 so when you have all those kind of negatives uh, it makes you know a perfect source for images for trading cards so basically that was born and they use those images to produce that those series of cards so 
Logan, do you have the uh, number of cars that were produced for each? I mean, uh, in each series? Yeah, I sure do. Um, they produced four different series originally in 1989. And each one of those series had a different color border. You now, the cars that they're showing there right now on the uh, the page, yeah, right there on that page, that is actually the reprint set, which we'll talk about that a little bit after we get done talking about the original set. But the original set, they had uh, a gun, what what they called gun gray borders, and it was just a gray border, and those were numbered cards one to thirty eight. Then the second series was a red fox. Yeah, and there's some of them right there. There's some of the gray borders right there that that Val's got up. Um, you know, you can see, you know, there's a lot of um, a lot of legends in there, you know, and NASCAR Hall of Famers as well. You know, there's Red Byron, Ralph Earnhardt, and there's Fireball Roberts. But those are really nice cards. Of course, they grade a little tough because of the gray border. But uh, that was the first series. Then the second series, they called it Red Fox. And so it's, it's like a, a deep red color border. If you want to show that, Val. And... Um, yeah, so there's the red border right there. Uh, and those are really nice looking cards. There's Leroy Yarborough, uh, Marvin Panch, and there's Cotton Owens over there. That's one of the uh, checklist cards. But uh, those, are, those are really nice. So that was the second series. That was cards number 39 to 76. Then they had a third series, and it's called the Sky Blue Series. And these are really nice looking cards right here. I love that color. But these were cards 77 through 114. As you can see, there's Daryl Derringer, Glenn Wood, and Junior Johnson. And, of course, you see uh, Junior Johnson there. He's uh, he's being uh, interviewed by uh, Ken Squire. So that's pretty cool. And look at like Ken Squire. He's, he looks so young in that. It's it's so cool. But these images are great. And like, like Val was saying, these came from the Racing Pictorial Archive. So a lot of these things had never been seen before. So, you know, they put them on cards. So the next series was the Burnt Orange series. This was series number four, and it was cards number 115 through 152. And here's some examples here. There's Charlie Glotzbach, uh, Fred Lorenzen, and Red Farmer. Of course, the, the latter two are in the NASCAR Hall of Fame as well. But just look at those images. They're just beautiful. Just beautiful photography from back then. I love these cards. So that was the original four series. And um, like I said, the burnt orange was cards 115 through 152. So originally they, they did 152 cards. Then later on in 1990, they came out with a fifth series of 110 cards. And uh, they called that the white gold series. And as you can see, it's kind of a it's kind of a yellowish color. They called it white gold. But there's Louise Smith and Wendell Scott and Tim Flock. Of course, you know we Wendell Scott and Tim Flock are in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. But these cards started; they were numbers 153 through 262. So the complete set from the two years is 262 total cards. Uh, the check they had checklists within all those two, and those were cards 190, 228, and 262 were the checklist cards in this white gold series. Plus, uh, I think that we've got another screen you, you can show. Yeah, and again, look at this photography. There's Herschel McGriff, Ned Jarrett, and Donnie Allison. I mean, all those guys are in the Hall of Fame, and it's such beautiful photography, uh, and that's why they make such wonderful cards. I, I wish we had more of these, and I, I kind of wish they had done more throughout the years, but I think they had some issues, didn't they, Val? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. Well, I mean, they had they had legal issues, I should oh. say. Oh. Well, I mean, they did the set, and then they had the, the, the reprint set where yeah. they, they wanted to add... Uh, they changed a few cards around, but yeah, I don't, I think when the re reprint set either, 
uh, either the way the contracts were worded or the whatever, but I guess they didn't get uh, royalties from that that second set. So I guess a lot of the drivers weren't too happy with with them. Yeah. So I guess it wasn't wasn't truly a legal issue, but it was more of a uh, you know doing the right thing kind of issue, and and paying them paying these drivers for their images. Because you got to remember now, it's like 1990, 1991, and now, you know, track, it just everything is so hot and everybody thinks, you know, they should be being paid a fortune, uh, you know, for their likeness and everything else. You had tracks coming out, but pro set, action packed. I'm sure I'm missing some. <laughs> they were all the wild, wild west of the unlicensed stuff as well. Oh yeah, there was a lot of unlicensed stuff. Of course, you had tracks and you had finish line and power and uh, the list goes on and on. Because, <clears throat> like like you say, it was the wild wild west back then. Um, and one thing I do want to say about these cards is originally they were selling these cards per series, so you could buy a series at a time. If you just wanted to buy uh, the sky blue series, you could just buy that or whatever. Then later on, they packaged them all as a set, the, the original set with the first four series. Uh, and then, of course, like I said, they, they did the white gold later in 1990. So those were um, those are really these are really, really nice cards. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, I know what I was wanting to say. They um, within this set, there's 20 nascar hall of fame inductees and they're those guys are uh red byron buck baker five roberts david pearson cotton owens glenn wood rex white junior johnson red farmer fred lorenzen tim flock wendell scott donnie allison herschel griff bobby isaac ned jarrett lee petty maurice petty herb thomas and keel yarborough now also something cool about these cards back then you know a lot of these guys were still alive you know, they've since passed on. You could send through the mail, you know, send these cars through the mail and get a lot of autographs. Uh, and I did that back then. Um, it was it was a lot of fun back then when you could do that. I bet. So this is, uh, let's see, this is one of the price guides. I think this is earlier on. Uh, from issue number eight from August of 90. And you can see the individual sets were $11. And, you know, they break it like you were saying, the cards 1 to 38. And so the first, 150, the first 152 cards were issued in 1989, and cards numbered 153 through 262 were released in. 1990, the first print cards can be recognized by the four different color borders. And then I think I have another. So this was a little bit later on. I don't know if it was 92, 93, but you can see the first cards, one to 152 is $140 now. And the individual sets were $35 a piece. And the white gold was $26 and the Wendell Scott was $10 by itself. I think, was it on this last one here? Yeah, so this one here where it was $11. They also show in this right-hand pane, uh, this last column, the fifth series of Master of Racing cards, 153 to 262, available August 20th. And there's kind of a little promo there to purchase that from TG Racing PO Box down in Orlando. Yeah, you know, a lot of people back then thought that TG was TG Shepard because, you know, he sponsored the Folgers car and all that or was a part of, of a sponsor on the, on the Folgers car and things like that back then. Right. And uh, that, you know, as you can tell, it's not because it's Dane Turner and Gene Granger. So it's TG. That's where they got the TG from. Gotcha. So it's a it's a cool little historic set. And you know, it's you can find it probably now for 20 30 bucks. Yeah, they're I, I was looking on eBay, they're 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 like anywhere from 25 30 bucks. You're right. 
Uh, still, yeah. still in the cell fan and everything. So, yeah. So speaking of that, I do have a little bit of show and tell. Okay. Um, first thing I want to show is there was also one promo card back then, and it was the checklist for the or the the cover card for the Red Fox Red series, and that's what it looks like. That's the that's the cover card. Now it looks pretty much the same as the regular card in the regular set, but if you look at the back, there's no number. And it also says, you know, for the for complete description and a free order form. So you can get a free order form. Wow. You can write the TG Racing and then it said special price for discounts or write attention something. It doesn't say what. But that was the promo card that they had. They only had one. And then you of course back then everybody had promo cards. You know, Max had promo cards, Tracks had promo cards, everybody had promo cards. Um so we were talking about the the white gold series. Well, I tell you what. Before I do that, I'm, let me show the box when they when they packaged the first four series. They used one of these these cover cards for one of the the, the series and used that as the you know the advertisement for the set. So if I can zoom in on it, you can see it's just taped on there. That's how they came, and it's just a it's just a regular old box, kind of like what Max did back in the day. Of course, there's no cards in here because I've gotten a lot of mine graded since then, but it's just a regular old box. So that's how that's how the original series came. Then secondly, when they did the the white gold series, it came in this this nice little box. This Masters of Racing box. And as you can see, these were cello cello wrapped inside as well. And I'll show I'll pull one of these out real quick and show show these. See, here's the white gold, TG Racing white gold. Yeah, that's, that's the cover card. So that's pretty cool. And uh, and you can find these all day long for you know like five bucks or whatever. And then here's here's the here's the other one. This is Ned Jarrett, barely lived. That's a pretty nice looking card right there with this car. And then of course inside there, you could um, you could order. I'm trying to see what this is. You could you could order sets and things and, and whatever from TG Racing. So there was a little card in there to advertise the sets and things. So that's how that's how the second series came. They they came in this box right here. So that's pretty neat. Then um, later on, you know, Val kind of touched on the reprint set, and that was all blue border set. It was a literally a reprint set of this set, except there were three new car or let's see, yeah. Yeah, three new cards added because they went from 262 cards to 265 cards. And what they did was in the reprint set, they took card number 110 and made it Ray Fox, which it was originally Bobby Myers. And they moved that to card number 262. Then card 113, they also made Ray Fox. And um, that card was also originally Bobby Myers. And they moved that to card number 263. So they also had a what they called a thank you card, which is card number 265. It's like, thank you for buying the set, blah, blah, blah. And on the front, it's got Tommy Moon. And I think it's he's with a Hudson Hornet or something on that card. And then, of course, they moved the checklist from the, the 262 to 264 because 265 was the was the thank you card. So they kind of moved a little few things around. So Val, you might want to touch on the Ray Fox part of it. Well, I was gonna, you know, gonna say so Ray Fox uh, was engine builder, engineer, and eventually he got hired by NASCAR to be an official inspector too. So mm -hmm. um and I guess I don't know what his relationship with with Dean or whatever, but they must have realized that they missed him and to add him back. But because uh, he was part of the three before early three mm -hmm. car number, but I did get to meet him down in um, Daytona. I went I guess it was summer of 2010. Uh, so there is a mall down in Daytona where. Um, a lot of these older drivers would go and and they in in the shop and they had some cars you could display, but they'd go and you can 
have a little autograph signing and, and they would sign. But uh, Marvin Panch was there when uh, when I was there as well. So got some card signed and Ray Fox was selling his book and got him to sign one of those too. So, but pretty interesting uh, guy and new, I don't say how to cheat, but he, uh, you know, the gray areas of, of NASCAR. And I think it was in his book where he mentioned uh, filling some of the tires with water so they would pass the weight inspection and, and then change the tires out and then you were good to go. So your car was lighter. <laughs> that, that's what they did back then, man. They made bumpers out of aluminum. Um, just all kinds of crazy things that they did to, to circumvent the rules. I mean, they weren't, I don't know that you call it cheating. They just, there wasn't a, a rule written around it. So they just took advantage of the loophole. <laughs> Right, so, um, so I eventually think Ray will get in the Hall of Fame. So I think so too. I think Ray will get in the Hall in the Hall of Fame. He doesn't have very many cards, so the fact that you you had the forethought to go ahead and get that autograph is pretty uh, SMRT. Good job. Like I said, it was in that in that range there of 2010, 2011 when I was starting to get into NASCAR heavy and get autographs and stuff. So. So, and then, like I said, looking at these old racing uh, collectible price guides, you know, not necessarily for the pricing, but for the articles and some of the, the history pieces to it. And that's why I started doing the blog. And that's why I started, we started the show is to, you know, kind of bring some of this history and some of this information back out in kind of video form instead of lost in paper magazine somewhere. So. True. Very true. Uh, one more thing I do want to show for show and tell is with that reprint set, they printed every, every card, the, the 265 card series and put it in one box. And this is what the box looks like. It's the masters of racing. As you can see, it says 265 collector cards in there. And of course you've got the greatest, the greatest names, which is true. The, these guys are the all time greats of NASCAR, but Again, they package these things in, in the different series. And if you can, if you look, you can see how, how they were done with the cellophane and how each one was wrapped. And like I said, they were blue border, they were blue bordered cards. So if you look, I just pulled the, the first one out. This is Jabe Thomas, but you can see how they look. Uh, to me, they don't look as good as the originals as, as far as the quality is concerned. I think. Uh, the pictures are good, but I just don't like the blue borders as much as I like, you know, the original five different series borders that they've got. So if you're looking for, you know, these and you're on eBay, you can get an idea of, you know, if you see the image of the box, you can tell if it's the the blue border or if it's the original, I don't say factory set, but the original set with the four colored cellophanes or yes. the blue dark blue box for the gold uh, white gold set or you get to see this box right here with the taped on cover card like i said then they just put the four series in here yeah so if it's in cellophane then you know it's still sealed the way it came or if it's seal cellophane's mm -hmm. off then it's been opened not that it's a bad thing but you know yeah and there is a set on the set red PSA set registry for the original 1989 slash 90 masters of racing set. So if you want to, if you want to try to collect that whole set or just want to grab some cards like Wendell Scott is a good one to have Ned Jarrett. There's some there, you know, Fred Lorenzen. There's a lot of, a lot of neat ones there that you can go and you can go find uh, and collect on the PSA set registry. Yeah. You can grab a, Herschel McGriff too, and have him sign. You sure can. Herschel McGriff is in there. I mean, just think. I mean, Ned Jarrett. He's you know, he's he can he can sign. He's in there. Um, you know, there's there's several that are still still with us that you could get signed in this set. It's not like it was in the heyday in the early '90s, but still, there's there's a lot of a lot of drivers you can still get get to sign these cards. I think. Um, who is it? Um, Oh gosh, I can't think of his name, Alan. Um, mm. but anyway, there, like I said, there are several that you can still get signed. Yep. All right, I think that's all we got. 
Yeah, I think that's all I've got in my notes. I'm looking back at my notes right now. I don't see anything that we missed. Uh, and the, the only thing I guess I could say is you know, some of the other legends that are in there are like Dave Marcus. Uh, of course, you can still you can get that one signed. Um, Bob Wellborn. I think he Dave Marcus was at the uh, Moonshiners. Uh, I think you're right. Thing not too long ago. Was it a week ago? Or two weeks yeah, ago? Yeah, I think it was, it was yeah last weekend. And, of course, there's Bob Wellborn, Dick Brooks, Fonny Flock is in there, Louise Smith, Charlie Glotzbach, you saw that one. Pete Hamilton, our, our 1970 Daytona 500 champion, he's in there. Uh, Cuckoo Marlin, Sterling's dad. Uh, Daryl Derringer, who he was like the Goodyear tire test guy for a long time. You know, he, Can you imagine being the tire test guy and they're blowing out tires on purpose to see what they do? That's right. what he did. Um Marshall Teague, who won the first Southern 500, uh, Marvin Panch, Tiny Lund, Speedy Thompson, and Ralph Earnhardt. So those are some of the, the notables that are there in that set, as well as the Hall of Famers that I mentioned earlier. So a lot of cool cards in there. I mean, if you really want to learn about the history of NASCAR, this is one of the sets that you really want to get and, and read all the backs, and you could learn so much. Yeah, and it's, it won't break the bank either. No, it won't break the bank at all. That's the great thing about it. Yeah, some of those older sets are great. Yeah. So that, that's all I've got. Um, like I said, it's a great set. So if you're interested, I'd, I'd go out there. You, you can find them on eBay all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, la I'm laughing because it's true. It is true. <laughs> so a more competition means better pricing. So, Indeed. All right. I guess... Uh, ready to go to king's court yep let's uh roll that beautiful bean footage all right this week's king's court and this week i've got a couple of honorable mentions and we'll start out with honorable mention number one. This was on September 11th, and it's a 2017 National Treasures dual signed relic, Richard Petty and Jimmy Johnson. It's number 11 of 15. And I mean, where else can you get two seven-time champions on one one card or one booklet? But they were asking $300 for this. And they settled on a best offer of only two hundred and ten dollars. Oh wow, that's cheap. I think so. For for something like this, I mean, where are you going to get this? And there, they, there's only fifteen of those. I mean, I know they had some others out of twenty five and things like that. And there's the one of one, all that. But still, that's a bargain for whoever got it. I think. Yeah, I think that's a good deal. It's beautiful too, man. It's a beautiful book. Yeah, good autos too. Yeah, they, they did good on the autos. It looks like Jimmy actually maybe may have tried to do well. No, he didn't do an H. That's part of the J. I thought maybe he might try to do an H in there. But he did yeah. better on that than he normally does. Yep. All right. So next up, honorable mention number two. This was on the 13th. 13th of September. It's a Dale Earnhardt 1996 scoreboard autograph out of 500. In fact, this one's number 128 of 500. Um, they were asking $349.95 for this. They settled on a best offer of $235 for this card. Um, I like this card, but I don't like this card. I mean, I think it's, it's neat. The autograph itself looks pretty good, but if you notice... The Sharpie, and it's weird, the Sharpie that they use, it looks like it's fading. And you, and you can especially see it in the numbering. Yeah. But we see a lot of cards like that from back then that, that are fading. I mean, we saw that at the National. We saw several cards right. that, yeah. that were faded. Well, they have them displayed on their desk or something like that, and yet UV light just kills it. Yeah, you UV light. Years, so. That's true. But, you know, something else that also kills any kind of collectible is um, fluorescent lighting. Do not ever 
you know, display your collectibles with fluorescent light. It will bleach the color out of everything. It's it's absolutely horrible. So, in fact, you know, my cards that are over there, they they hardly see the light of day. I mean, in fact, I've got all the shades shut. I don't. There's not a lot of light that gets in here except the lights I turn on when I'm here. So, because I don't want anything to fade, I want everything to keep its its color. But uh, what do you think about that card, Val? Uh, I mean, I like like you, I like it, but I don't like it. I just, uh, and it's probably a different reason. I don't know. I just don't like that side of his head there. But yeah, we, but you guys have the goggles on. <laughs> uh, I would like maybe more of a frontal view than the side view, but um, I price of the thing is pretty good. Yeah, I mean it's not bad. Two hundred thirty-five bucks is what it went for. That's that's not bad. And it's, it's not a really bad autograph. It looks like it's just faded some, just a little bit. Yeah, I do like. You know, it's got the Earnhardt with the uh, the swoop back underneath yep. the name. So, yeah, he did a great job on that autograph. Very nice. All right. So next is our Joker of the week. This was also on the thirteenth of September. Air Tonsen, a nineteen ninety-one. Chromey Pitts, <laughs> number 80, SGC 4.5. They were asking 250 for this, and it sold for 200 bucks. Wow. It's pretty cool. It's a disc, you know, and it's it's Chromey Pitts. You know, I've, <laughs> I kind of, when I start thinking about Chromey Pitts, it's like, man, maybe I need to use some deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. But. It's, it's you know, I like discs. I think it think it's really neat. And again, it's it's not a, a rookie, but it is from 1991. It's just unique. Um, right. It's a tough issue, probably. I mean, how many people save those? Right from 91. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, people just didn't save those things. Click on the back real quick. I think was that around when everybody was doing the pogs, pig pog, whatever they are. Uh, There's a pogs. Big, yeah. They, everybody was trying to push that, but it never took off. Yeah, I'm not sure where this was um, issued. Maybe, maybe it's in Brazil for all I know. I don't know. Maybe, but it's still pretty cool. It, uh, it's pretty cool. Different. Chromy pits. Okay. <laughs> all right. Next up is our Jack of the Week. This was well, actually, I, I think I may have messed up here. I've got this on the fourth. That's a little early. I think I did mess up a little bit. So my bad. But it's it, this is from the fourth of September. It's a 2022 Topps Dynasty F1 F F1 Formula One Lando Calrissian Norris Patch Auto out of ten. It went for six hundred and eighty dollars with twenty eight bids. So pretty cool card. Uh, I'm not sure where that part of the uniform is. I didn't have time to look at that to see where that was from. Um, it's kind of hard to say. But he did a good job on his auto. It's a little streaky, but not bad. Yep. And it is out of 10. Not bad. And not bad. Um, yeah, I think I, I kind of messed up on that one. I was in a little bit of a hurry, so I, I didn't notice the date. I just saw it was Lando, and it was uh, a nice card, and I picked it. <laughs> it's all right. And it, I think I may have already picked this one before, actually, now that I look at it. <laughs> it it's, it's fine. Yeah. All right. All right, so moving on. Queen of the Week. This was on the 8th of September. Tony Breidinger, 2022 Obsidian Electric Etch White Mojo Autograph. Say that fast 10 times. It's a one-of-one one rookie card. It went out for bidding, but it only had one bid, and it went for $429.99 for that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty hefty price. But it's a nice card. I mean, I don't know how it would grade. And keep, like I said, keep in mind that that is ungraded. Right. But yeah, that's that's pretty pretty pricey for for somebody who hadn't have has not even run a truck. Well, she has run right. a few truck races. That's right. She, but she hasn't run anything else in NASCAR. But she has done good in the trucks. So you, you have she to give her that. Pretty cool. What do you think about that? I, I like it. I'm just thinking, you know, four hundred some dollars, and you could, you know, pick up uh, Kyle Busch rookies and 
uh, Jimmy Johnson rookies and stuff like that for that kind of or low numbered stuff, you know. But sure could. But you know, graded, graded she, stuff is PSA tens. Yeah, she, you know, prospecting and um, she has a massive following on Instagram. So uh, she's work, you know, working her way up. So it could be, it could be hundreds, of thousands, you know, <clears throat> in a few years or not. So, <laughs> well, when NASCAR takes off again, it could be. This is true. I'm, I'm expecting that to happen. So. With these prices like this, it's the last affordable sport to collect. Indeed. There's no doubt. All right. So next up is our King of the Week. This is on the 10th of September. It's the 1987 World of Outlaws. Jeffy Poo, Jeff Gordon, rookie card, number 52. It's a PSA 10. They were asking $1,000 for this card. That would have been a price probably back during the pandemic, but they did settle for a best offer of $650. Oh, wow. Yeah, for that card. That's pretty good. That's that's pretty impressive these days, I think. Um, you know. For one, Yeah, for those. <clears throat> I can't remember. I know we talked about in the, on that episode how many they actually made. Was it like 10,000 or less of those or 5,000? Maybe it was yeah, like it five thousand, and they it held it like many. a thousand, or they, they held back so many uncut sheets. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's not a super mass produced set. So, of course, Jeff being so young, it's it's one of my favorite. Yeah, and he's trying to grow a mustache there too, <laughs> like we all were. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was only like like. Eight years old there or something. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think he's like 15, 16 or something like that. 17. Yeah, yeah he was. Well, yeah, he's 16 because he was born, I think, in 1971. Okay. So, yeah, he's 16 years old. Yeah, he's just a, he's just a puppy there. Yep. But, yeah, pretty cool card. Um, I think that's, I think that's, that's probably price. the price that you should go for. Yeah. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer and one of the icons of the sport, so. Yep, indeed. All right. All right. So next, we've got our Ace of the Week, which is our one of one. This was on the 9th of September. It's 2022 Tops Dynasty F1 Sebastian Vettel. Dynasty Dual Logo Patch Auto 101 Rare. And um, this card actually went out for bidding, and it sold for $1,087.51 with 26 bids. Wow. So people were wanting this card because, you know, he's, you know, he's a former champion. So it's a nice card. I think part of that, that bottom part is part of the Aston Martin logo. I don't know what the, what the top part is, but uh, it's a pretty cool patch patch is because, you know, his uniform is all green anyway. So you're not going to get a lot of color. It's just green and white. Yeah. But yeah, I think it patches uh, work in its favor. So, yeah, I agree. But it's a nice car. That's you know, it, but you think about it. I mean, how much is a a box of twenty twenty two Dynasty these days? Is it? It's less than that, isn't it? I think it's more. I can go out and look real more. Quick, but... Yeah, I don't know. Why I was thinking they were around a thousand bucks or so. And I may be I may be wrong, but I may be wrong. Uh, 2021. Is this 21 or 22? 22. Uh, let's see. Uh, blow out had 21. So it's like 21 is $1,500 a box. Right. And let me see. Move check real quick on Steel City. They also have 21. Don't we have 22 anymore? Hmm. Maybe they're sold out. Maybe or. Well, anyway, maybe I guess. Adams, the only one who has it. Sometimes they like not all of them have the same stuff. It's very true. But, you know, this is probably about where this card needs to be, I would guess. It's a one of one. It's got some nice patches. It's autographed, you know. Yeah, I'm thinking thousand dollar range is probably about right for this card. It's nice. 
Former yeah. chance. It's nice looking. It's a one on one. I mean, it's a good looking card. So, yep, it is. All right. And a lot of bidding there, too. So, yeah, a lot of people wanted that card. Okay. All right. All right. So, finally, we've got uh, our Royal Flush of the Week. This was on the 8th of uh, September. It's a 2020 Topps Dynasty F1 Kimi Rakinen logo glove patch auto PSA 10 pop one. But that's uh that's pretty cool. It's got his name on there uh from the glove. And of course it is 2020 so keep that in mind as well. Now they're asking ninety five hundred dollars for this card. They settle on a best offer at fifty two hundred. Wow. Yeah fifty two hundred that is pretty cool there with the with the glove piece. Yeah, I mean, and his auto is okay. I mean, it's not streaky or anything. It's nice and clean. And it looks like he signed it in the right spot, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, like you said, it's a 2020, so it's first year. Yep. So I can see where that would, would make it a premium on that card. Right. That's some, that's some, that's some money. But it's again yeah. a PSA ten and auto ten, so yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a double dime. It's a, it's a it's just a really nice card. Uh, do I think it's sort of fifty two hundred dollars? Mm, I don't know. Maybe you know a lot of that stuff to me is still a little pricey from twenty twenty. I realize that's the first year of of Dynasty, but you know, I'm just a NASCAR guy. What do I know? Right. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's not in our wheelhouse. So, with, with the pricing like that, no, no, it's that's out of my price range for sure. I don't even take that much money to the national with me to spend. <laughs> but we uh, definitely, uh, I was like, you know, appreciate it. It's a, uh, it's a nice, it's a nice combo there with the auto and the piece of glove there with his name. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They did, they did tops did a good job on that. Sure did. So uh, that's it. That's all we've got for this week's Kings Court. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? Well, we've got our obligatory hashtag skid marks, Ty Freaking Gibbs, and hashtag slab fire. Slab fire. Get that in there. Got to get our slab fire in there. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody watching, listening on the podcast from even Russia. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. In <laughs> uh, Tennessee and South Carolina and and uh, the other the other states, we appreciate you watching and listening all over the world. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the show and got got to learn a little about the 1989 TJ Masters of Racing and a little bit of the history there. So. But from uh, me and Logan, um, we, again, appreciate it and enjoy the races, and we'll catch you next week.